Well, hello. Thanks for coming to another one of my videos from Astro Patio. But as you can see, we're not on my patio. We're on my brother's patio. This is my brother, Terry. Glad to meet you. And you saw the unboxing video that I did on the Lunt LS60 MT. So now we're gonna put it together for visual viewing from the parts that you saw. First off, in order to put the dovetail on the mount that came in the box, you need a 3 16th. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Allen wrench. So we'll just turn this upright or upside down and you have a big flat on the bottom with three holes in it and that's where your dovetail plate goes. So it doesn't matter which direction you put the dove plate, as long, except you can't put it sideways, the holes won't match. So we'll just drop these in and they go in to where they have the recesses for the bolt heads on the, bo on the bottom that's going to go against the mount. So it's actually going to sit like this. You line up your holes, get your bolt started. They'll drop down just a hair when they match up. And you, and you take the 3 16 and screw it down tight. Now don't pull down, don't pull one side down completely because it actually lifts it up, tilts it. So we'll get the other one down and just snug it up. And then we'll tighten them completely after they get snugged. Like putting on a tire. All right, now we'll turn it back over. Of course, that looks funny because there's a, I, that's the adapter you saw that I did earlier from my other videos. So we'll turn it upright. So now we have the Soul Searcher uh, te from Teleview uh, Solar Finder. One side has got a hole in it and the other side's got a opaque film on it in the circle. So what you want to make sure is you point the hole towards the beginning of the optical train and the uh, uh, filament, the frosted, frosted glass piece on the end of the telescope, pointing towards the end of the telescope. And to put that on, there's a slot on the top mounting uh, ring that uh, it, fits, it slides right into that. Take the mounting bolts and a 5 seconds Allen ring. And you line up their holes. So it's kind of like one of those old time Quaker Oats eclipse watchers. Yeah. But Quaker Oats tube, you poke a hole in the front, cut a hole, uh, window in the side, line it up, and you can watch the eclipse. Yeah, and you just realized that you dated yourself, right? Half, hey. the, half the kids that, don't, that are going to watch this won't know what that is. You can do it with a shoebox, too. Yeah, true. You don't have to have a telescope or special glasses. You can do that to watch yeah. an eclipse. Or even to view the sunspots. If they're big enough, you might be able to see it, make them out. All right. So that's how that mounts. And this is the B1200 solar block, H-alpha solar blocker, or H-alpha portion of the scope that you want to use in, congr in congruent with the H-alpha uh, uh, system here the red part, which is the another H out part of the H alpha filter. So the two inch side will insert directly into the scope like this. How far in should you put it? Depending on if you're going to use an eyepiece, you can put it about halfway through. If you're going to use a camera, then just put it in a little bit. You need the longer distance for the camera than an eyepiece. Increase focal length? No, it, it, what that does, it doesn't increase the focal length. It, the, where the uh, focal point comes together is a certain distance from the last optics in the telescope. The focal point is usually higher out on an eyepiece than on a camera. It's closer in, so you'd actually have to have it out further to get, it, to get the eyepiece, to get the focal length from here to here, where the camera, camera lens would be. But you, you, you can play with it and figure out where it needs to be for each one. All right, and that's how you put it together for H-alpha solar viewing. And after we view the H-alpha for a while, we will reconfigure it. Uh, you'll have to break it down to reconfigure it for white light. And then there's a different reconfiguration from white light to uh, nighttime observing. And we'll go through each of those configurations. Does the sun come up at night? 
No. Sun doesn't come up at night. The so, moon comes up at night, and you can look at, use this telescope to view the moon. Oh, okay, now I understand. Without, without this or this. It okay. just becomes a regular telescope. Oh, well, I'm glad you explained that to me because I used it as it's set up. Yeah, no, it, it reconfigures in three different modes. Okay, cool. So anyway, let's do some looking. Here we have the Lunt LS60MT, all set up for H-Alpha solar viewing and mounted on my tripod. As we rotate the scope around, we'll take a look at all the different components. Let's start with the dual speed Crawford focuser. The silver dial is for coarse focusing while the black dial is for fine focusing. This particular focuser is a little light on the lifting capacity. With the weight of my ASI 1600mm, a 7 slot electronic field filter wheel and a field flattener, it seems to fall out of focus when looking above about 70 degrees. You might think about upgrading the focuser to one of their other focusers they provide, including the new model they just announced. Now we come across the Lunt Zoom eyepiece that came with the package that I ordered. It keeps a nice even focus across the field of view at all zoom levels. It needs to be refocused slightly after adjusting the zoom in the eyepiece though. As we travel further around, we find the B1200 blocking filter, one of the pieces needed to make the scope H-Alpha ready. The B1200 is designed more for imaging as it gives you a wider field of view than the B600. As you see, I have the 90 degree, but they do have the option to get a straight through blocker. I think if you're go doing more imaging than viewing, a straight through would be better so you don't have the extra glass mirror. Now we come across the Soul Searcher Solar Finder. Very useful when aligning the scope with the sun. Unfortunately, there is no way to perfectly align with the view of the scope, so mine is off to the left a little bit. But I can still see portion of the sun in the eyepiece. But, har but it's harder when I'm using a small sensor camera to find it in the camera. Here's the heart and soul of the H-Alpha system, the removable H-Alpha pressure tune module. It is a pressure adjusting system to help in fine tuning for seeing more details in the textured surface or photosphere of the sun. Of course, I have no clue as to what its internal parts are or how it actually works, but it sure makes a big difference. Now that we have gone through all the pieces put into place that make up the scope for H-Alpha viewing, let's see how the pressure tune module makes changes to the surface of the sun while adjusting the tuning system. As you may notice, I'm using one of my black and white planetary cameras because I think a black and white camera picks up more details than a Keller camera does. And of course, you can add false color to the stacked black and white image to finish it. I'm starting the imaging with the tuner adjusted to see the best texture of the sun's surface that I can manage now. You can see some bright white areas and around those areas you can see some swirling. You can also make out a couple of dark solid spots. If you look at the edge of the disk you can slightly make out some prominences. As I start to make adjustments to the tuning knob, you start losing the texture and it begins to start washing out like it's being overexposed. As I start turning the knob back in the opposite direction toward where I started, the reverse happens as it gets better tuned for the surface otherwise known as the photosphere of the sun. Another option you have using this H Alpha Solar Telescope is taking pictures of the prominences that are coming off of the sun's edges. And uh, it's pretty simple to do that. All you have to do is, uh, is overexpose the 
pictures that you're taking to the point that uh, all the texture of the sun disappears and you get nothing but a white disc and then you can start to notice the prominences on, along the edges. Here's an example of using a color camera. Now I'll admit that it's probably not that good, but this is what I got with the color. Anyway, I figured I'd show it to you. Now I mentioned false color earlier in the video, and now I want to show you an example of taking a black and white image and putting false color on it.